Hi, this is Ed. Welcome to the Outer Light channel. Well, before I go on, I just want to thank my patrons at patreon.com slash the outer dark. Also on steamit.com slash the outer light. And of course, I'll have another video coming today on my Patreon account on something I think is interesting anyway. Um, so this is, this is just not this story I want to go into. But I really want to go into the overall strange structure of people that just seem to disappear or something very strange happens to them in recent times. There's no doubt we live in a surveillance state, you know, all of our cell phones or all the video cameras around and all these kinds of things track our movements as to what happens with us. Uh, so all these things that we do are usually tracked, but somehow people go missing, completely disappear, and it's very hard to find out what happened to them. These are a number of these strange cases that all have a similar pattern to them, you know, that something strange happened, you know, in these disappearance cases. They're probably they're completely unconnected, but they do have that strange through line to them. So let's have a look at the latest one. This is September the 11th, 2017. This is really going around the internet at the moment. A 19-year-old West Side woman was found dead inside a walk-in freezer at the Ro Rosemont Hotel Sunday. Um, so you probably think, okay, you know, strange deaths happen all the time. This poor young woman, something happened to her and she ended up in the freezer. You know, it's unfortunate, but it does happen. You might be thinking that. But what's very strange about this with the core nutshell of what makes this very mysterious is the fact that the whole place is under surveillance cameras. So she had to walk into the walk-in free, uh, freezer itself. And what happens, she had to walk past surveillance cameras, but there's no video footage of her ever walking past the surveillance cameras, which are motion detected. Here we can see some video because she does go into these areas and you can see her track here. I've got one. Um, this is the, the video that the police department released. Um, so on the 9th, as a matter of fact, well, the video is from the 9th itself of September 2017 with little time codes and things like that. So let's just blow this up a little bit for people on their cell phones, of course. So hopefully you can see it. <clears throat> you can see it there. We'll try to get a little bit bigger on that. So this is from the Chicago Tribune, and this is the police have released this video footage itself. So I just want to note, I'm just going to go through this and note just some, you know, some pretty clear examples of what's happening here as we go. First of all, the woman is on the left, or the right hand side here of the video, or her left, and she is the one with the long hair right there, as you'll see walking along. No, her kinetic movements, you know, the way that she walks seems to be quite stable at this point. The time of this is 13.25, so that's 1.25. So let's have a look here at 1.25 according to that clock there. Um, going along here, she's quite stable. She seems to be quite aware of what she's doing there. Just walking along here, and then we cut to approximately two hours later. Now something's happened in those two hours. The most obvious assumption is she's taken some kind of narcotics, some kind of drugs, or you know, drunk a lot of alcohol because when she gets out of the elevator, she's completely different, which you know happens all the time. People ingest substances and they take a while to, you know, go away to a party perhaps or, you know, do whatever young people do these days. I'm not much of a party person myself, but <clears throat> you know, you can imagine. Uh, what people get up to. So coming out of the elevator completely, you know, inebriated, you know, um, very difficult to walk, you know, trouble with their with balance. I mean, this is if they're intoxicated with alcohol, this is, you know, way on the intoxication scale. So here's again, this is her walking from the elevator itself. Got a couple, so this is about 2 hours 25 minutes later, so you had about 1.30, so this is just after this. Again, staggering down the hallway itself. It was really kind of completely out of it. And hardly even keep on to the railing. So remember, she's already disappeared from a party the night before, vanished. Then she shows up a day after, you know, after people have filed missing persons reports, she showed up only on this video footage in a hotel, walking along, and here she's unescorted, so um, she seems to be going along her way, very intoxicated once again, hardly fully inebriated, not being able to actually 
stand up or walk. She comes back round the corner, really struggling probably to make what sense of the world that you can make when you're that intoxicated. Coming back now, back around the corner. I know you probably don't see, need to see the whole of this, but if you if you want to analyze the video, at least there's some video there you can analyze or go to the Chicago Tribune, which will be placed inside the comment, on um, in the top of the comment section. So here's the strange thing. This is where it gets strange, okay? Because here she's going into the kitchen and the video is recording her going into the kitchen. Okay, she's found in the freezer of this kitchen, but she never comes back. So let's have a look. So this is her going in. So what says the Tribune says, this clip is the last time Jenkins appears on video according to footage made available by the Rosemont police there. So this is the last time she's ever seen alive. So she walks down there, very inebriated again through the kitchen. So at around 3, 3.30 a.m. Jenkins' father called her mother to say they had lost track of her. So then you expect Jenkins' body was found about 24, 21 hours later in a walk-in freezer in the motel. thing about this is that that's you know not so mentioned in this is to get to that walk-in freezer she had to pass this video camera again she had to pass the video footage but she was never recorded coming back into the walk-in freezer so it picked her up moving there but it never picked her up coming into the walk-in freezer itself so if we go down there there's a little mention of that itself Though it doesn't seem, and this is, uh, you know, a video released by Rosemount Police Friday depicts uh, this young lady staggering alone through a deserted hotel kitchen and disappearing around the corner. The last time she's seen alive. Though it doesn't capture her entering the walk-in freezer where her body was found. Video taken by what appears to be a motion-activated camera shows that no one else came into the area until her body was found. So the mystery is, how did her body get into the freezer? It doesn't show anyone bring the body in there. That's the grand mystery, because this place is under surveillance and it never shows her going into the freezer itself. So just another strange case. What's interesting about this is this happens quite a lot, actually, especially with video. Now, obviously, you could say something like the police aren't telling the entire story. You know, obviously there could be that, that case. There's many different things, ways you can look at it. Um, you know, maybe for some reason the camera didn't pick up the motion and she just walked past it anyway. But just a strange case if you're wondering about that mystery going on right now. Just mimics a number of things called in the Elisa Lamb case. I'll just go into this very briefly. So Elisa Lamb went missing. Disappeared January the 31st, 2013. She was, in fact, a young student um, having pro some problems at school. But what's strange thing about this is she was found in a, a water tank on top of the Cecil Hotel there, which is a notorious lo location for these kinds of things. The ba Black Dahlia, for example, uh, in these cases. You know, if you don't know about that, that's a horrific uh, case from, you know, <laughs> from, you know, almost 70 years ago plus now would be oh, probably 1930s I believe I'm not exactly sure 1930s early 40s somewhere around there the death of Elisa Lamb so she disappeared and she was found up in a water tank what was strange about this is the footage again when she came out of the elevator as you can see here and her behavior here so let's take a little look at this if you haven't seen it a lot of people have seen this numerous times of course so her behavior seems normal and then she just starts pressing all of these buttons very weirdly she stands in the corner and the elevator won't close okay the elevator doors will not close for some reason why aren't the elevator doors closing maybe there's a button there she pressed that stopped the elevator doors from closing i don't know usually it's pretty automated but she seems afraid of something you know and you might think, well, maybe there's someone chasing her or something. 
But look at her strange behavior at this point. Look at this very strange behavior that Elisa Lam has, as we keep on watching. You know, in regards to something watching, something happening. It seems to hear something. It's a very unusual case. It's captured the attention of a lot of researchers, even like paranormal researchers, wondering what really happened. The water tank itself have made mistakes in videos that I've done on this in the past. But here's where her arms just go limp. Do you see that? They just go limp. You can just see it out the fra um, frame there. And then she starts acting extremely weird. Let's fast forward a little bit here. She comes back into the elevator. Okay, she presses the buttons. Like she doesn't know what's going to happen there. Trying to make the elevator go again, it will not go, of course. It's another strange event. Again, trying to make the elevator go, it just will not go. And here's where she has her little episode out here, as you can see. Look at her hands. Very strange, like weird hand movements and stuff like that. And of course she was found, um, she was actually found at the top of the water tank, which had a pretty big opening in it, uh, but it was locked. I'm not sure if some people say the padlock was on it. You know, you've got to remember that the Cecil Hotel themselves, you know, are going to say it's going to be hard to get information out, the, out of them because there could be a lawsuit. But nonetheless, she got up into this strange water tank on the roof itself. This is really... Uh, last time she's seen and then guess what you know you have the elevated doors close so if you go over to Lisa Lamb here just to brush this up very quickly this is Cecil Hotel as you can probably see there it's just seeing if there's a picture of the water tank there's no picture of the water tank itself but it's really on the top of the it's just a big mass of water tank um, on the top of the hotel really very not a lot of parallels have been drawn with the movie Dark Water, as a matter of fact, because when they found her, her body was severely um, decomposed. It was difficult to get out of the water tank because of that itself, and uh, you know uh, these kinds of things. But the mystery is, how did she get up into the water tank? Well, you know, it, who knows? Maybe people capable of anything, right? It was very strange. Here's another one disappearance of Brian Schaefer. Now this individual, what's strange about this, and this person being a medical student and all these kinds of things, uh, was they went into a bar and then they disappeared without a trace. And when the when video footage was analyzed from outside the bar itself and the surrounding district, it showed everyone that had been inside this bar leave on the video camera footage, except this individual right here. And the police said it's highly unlikely that um, he got out any other way because they counted the people and, you know, they looked at the people coming out of the bar slowly. Everyone exited but this individual and he's just vanished without a trace again. And no one knows where he is. So we don't know. He could be alive. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he could be alive right now, as a matter of fact. Who really knows? But he never exited the bar and no one's seen him ever since. He seemed to literally just vanish without a trace. Another strange one here is Cullen Infinity, the ex-football quarterback, was found dead after going missing on a fishing trip. These are just some of a few. What's interesting about this case is this person was found dead, you know, and he called his wife, you know, he's a pretty tough person and he said he was lost and he sounded really frightened because he went on this fishing trip, you know, and he said someone was following him, okay, and he was telling his wife and his wife was saying she had never seen him scared before. Okay, so then what happened is he was found dead. What's strange about that is his clothes were, had been taken off and put on the wrong way round. And also, what is even stranger than that, after they found him, the police tracked his cell phone, because he had a cell phone on them. They found in the time that he recalled his wife and then was found dead, his cell phone seemed to 
the GPS from it seemed to be like someone had put it in a spacecraft and flown it around, you know, the entire area very fast. It seemed to bounce all around. So there was a direct measurable, very strange thing that happened. Of course, who really knows? You know, who really knows what's deep in the woods, right? And all these kinds of things. Um, so, you know, no one really knows what happened. Those lesser known facts about the GPS, I don't know if they'll be reporting on those much. But just, you know, a number of strange uh, cases that I thought people might be interested in. Just some very strange things. So it was like six foot three, 330 pounds, so a very big individual. And, you know, it seems strange for someone that, you know, like that his wife had said, or his girlfriend, so I should say, I think it was his girlfriend or his wife. No, it was his wife. Um, said, Infinity had called his wife Sunday and expressed concern about being out on the river. So, pardon me. He was just uncomfortable about his surroundings at the time. He said he was getting off the river and things went downhill from there. You know, so if it wasn't for the cell phone data and the GPS stuff, then you could dismiss it and say he, you know, maybe had a schizophrenic episode or some kind of paranoid episode, took off his clothes, put them on the wrong way round, and then uh, really he was found deceased. Nonetheless, just some strange things happening there in, in the world. I thought someone, you know, take a break from the politics for just a little while in order to have a look at the other weird st stuff that's happening. In the meantime, of course, this is Ed from the Outer Light channel. I'm on patreon.com slash the Outer Dark if you want to support my channel. I'll have a new video coming there today. I'm also on steamit.com slash the Outer Light to put some more articles out in there. In the meantime, though, this is Ed from the Outer Light channel. Stay safe, and in the meantime, take care of yourselves, you know, and go places with friends. If you're going to some spooky place like the Cecil Motel with its very strange history, you probably want to take a few friends with you, you know. Friends look out for you. That's why it's great to have some friends. In the meantime, this is Ed from the Outer Light. Stay safe, and I'll see you all later.